Hello and welcome to your communities, your stories. My name is Chris and in this episode I read an extract from a Miss B. Wright's blog post about the African links to the square mile in the city of London. History has many sides depending on who is telling the story. Unfortunately some of that knowledge although right in our faces can lay buried. But during a walking tour organised by Black History walks the unwitting contributions African people made to anchor London as the centre of commerce over the last few hundred years was uncovered. A common theme running throughout the tour was symbolism linked to African resources or cultural practices that seem to have been absorbed and accepted into British history. From Goldsmith Hall, minutes from St Paul's Tube Station, and in other areas such as the Bank of England, stone carvings featuring two snakes intertwined up a staff are visible. This imagery is traditionally associated with the healing arts. The symbol is known as caduceus and was borrowed by the Romans and Greeks from the Egyptians. The Greeks apparently took a lot of their culture from North Africa while studying there. Another popular icon on London streets, particularly in St Paul's, is the lion. Although not native to Britain, the animal has become a symbol of pride and strength and ironically has become synonymous with Englishness. Think of the three lions on the English football t-shirt or our 10p coin. All feature lions. Obelisks were prominent in the architecture of ancient Egypt, but have also come to be a popular fixture within St Paul's and Bank. These monuments are tall, with four sides that end with a pyramid-like shape at the top. These constructions were originally known as Tekenu in Egypt, but were renamed Obeliscus by the Greeks. Obelisks were built in twos and were a symbol of the sun god Ra. It was also thought that the god existed within the structure, but the global appeal has meant that obelisks are now dispersed around the world and fewer than half of them remain in Egypt. And a stone's throw from Cheapside, the street names such as Moore Street, Moore Fields and Moore Lane reveal the presence of black people in the area. According to our guide, these streets were named as such because of the high number of Moors, people from the north of Africa, that lived there. There is also the story of Jamaican-born William Bill Davidson, who, between the 1780s and 1820s, lived, studied, worked and died within the British Isles. After enjoying a varied career, which included working in the Royal Navy, becoming a cabinet maker and studying maths at a Scottish university, he became an activist. Feeling motivated by the struggles of his fellow black people, he was involved in trying to blow up the Houses of Parliament, according to details from website blackpresence.co.uk. Sound familiar? And yet, why do I only know of Guy Fawkes, whom is remembered every 5th of November? According to our tour guide, he would have been successful if there had not have been an informant in his group. For his attempts to overthrow the establishment, he was tried and executed and beheaded at Newgate Prison. The site of today's Old Bailey, moments before he died, Davidson said he would rather die as a free man than live as a slave. Thanks for listening. That was an extract from a piece published in 2014 called Rewriting History of a War. To read the whole piece and to find out more on African history, please visit www.nisbywrites.co.uk.